Hello and welcome to Mount Carmel United Methodist Church's online worship service for November 15, 2020. I'm Todd Humphrey, one of the certified lay servants at the church, and I'm very happy to be able to join you today for worship. Even though COVID-19 makes it difficult to join together in person, we can rest assured that the Holy Spirit is present with us today. So if you're at home watching this just around the corner in Frederick County, across the state of Maryland, or anywhere in the United States, you are joined with a community of believers today. I would also like to take a moment on behalf of Mount Carmel to recognize all of our veterans on this week of Veterans Day. A grateful nation is forever in your debt. And now let us center ourselves for worship as we sing Just a Closer Walk to, with Thee. Join me in our opening prayer. 
Dear Lord, we come to you with grateful and humble hearts today. We give thanks for the technology that allows us to join in worship today. With election day behind us, Lord, we ask that you soothe the raw nerves of a weary nation and that you be a balm that allows us to focus on the future and heal this nation. We know, dear Lord, that you've already seen an end to the COVID-19 pandemic and that your healing hands will be a part of this solution. Give us the patience to continue to run this race until a time when we can come together again in safe and healthy ways. We ask for healing of the sick, comfort for the grieving, and your continued blessing upon this church, this community, our nation, and the world. We ask, Lord, that you continually and abundantly bless our nation's veterans. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 30, verses 1 through 5. The song of dedication of the temple of David and of giving thanks. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. Restore me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but a, for a moment, but his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
grateful for Mr. Todd, who so beautifully read the scripture in Psalm. I want to try it with you in the King James Version. Listen to this. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast bought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If I were going to take a title for the sermon today, the title would probably be, I'm a morning person. I'm a morning person. So when you read these first five verses in this passage, you see somebody who was going through two things. In verse one, they talk about, you have lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. So if the person who wrote this song was David, one of the things you all remember about King David is that David was a prolific warrior. The dude could fight, okay? And y'all remember a little story, brother, was hell with a slingshot, right? Ooh, I said hell on Sunday. Forgive me. Okay. Brother was bad with a slingshot, wasn't he? Yes, he was. So with David being such a prolific warrior and such a mighty king of Israel, one thing you can be sure of is he had enemies all around hostile enemies from all the other nations around that hated him because he was so prolific at defeating them in warfare. If they could have gotten their hands on David, oh, they would have torn him limb from limb and would have taken him down. So in verse one, he says, you have lifted me up. You have not let my enemies triumph and rejoice over me. Then in verse two, it seems like he switches gears. He says, O oh, my Lord God, I cried unto thee, and you have healed me. So now we go from the enemies taking you down to sickness, to illness. And he says, you have healed me when I cried to you. Then he says, you have brought my soul up from the grave and have kept me alive so that I should not go down to the pit. So that tells me that whoever wrote this, that person was not just sick. They were like sick under death. They were like sick, sick, for real sick. You ever been for real sick? As Jack Nicholson would say in, in, in A Few Good Men, is there any other kind? Okay, movie reference. You'll work that out later. So he was really sick. He was really sick to the point to where he was ready to die. But he cried unto the Lord and the Lord healed him. And he did not die. He did not go down to the grave. He did not go down to the pit. So then he started thinking about the despair he was in. On the one hand, facing his enemies who would have killed him and got rid of him. On the other hand, staring down the barrel of severe sickness that could have taken him down to death. I look at the situation of the world and our nation today, and we have an enemy out there that is threatening to both make us sick and take us down. That enemy is COVID-19. As of today that we record this message, Tuesday, there have been over 240,000 people in our country that have already died. So this thing is taking lives. It is tearing apart families. It is causing people untold heartache and grief. I have buried COVID patients and I have grieved with COVID families. So I know how real the pain of this pandemic is. And my heart goes out to anybody who is suffering or who has suffered as a result of this illness. May God bless in you and strengthen you, strengthen you, keep you and your families. So I look at what we're going through as, as, as the writer of this passage did when he calls it a night. We are in the middle of a long, dark night. It's now eight to nine months old and it's still coming and coming and coming. Matter of fact, the news reports are saying the virus is making a resurgence and numbers of transmissions and diagnoses are up all over the country. 
So that tells me we have an enemy out there that is trying to literally destroy us. But the writer of this passage said, but I cried unto the Lord and he lifted me up. I cried unto the Lord and he healed me. I guarantee you right now, if America and the world would take the writer's advice and cry unto the Lord, the Lord would hear us. And not only that, he likened this thing to a night of mourning, of horror, of sickness, of almost dying and having your enemies almost achieve victory. But he said, here's the problem with the night. He said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So here's the message for this day. Weeping will happen. The fact that we are Christians, we know Jesus Christ, is no vaccination or inoculation against hard times, against persecution, against sickness or death. There are some people who think just because we know Jesus Christ, the Lord will wave a magic wand and make all of our problems go away. There are some folks who will tell you, we're not supposed to get sick because if you have faith, you believe in God, you won't get sick. There are some people who are so hyper-spiritual, they will tell you, you speak to that sickness, tell that sickness to go away. Well, if that was the case, ain't none of us would get sick, right? Okay? So the thing is, we are real flesh and blood people who live in a real flesh and blood body, and we go through real flesh and blood issues, and being a Christian is not an inoculation against going through that. But we have a resource, and that resource is the ability we have to do what the writer of this passage did. We can call on the name of the Lord, and when the Lord so chooses, the Lord can raise us up, bring us to life, bring us to healing, and not let this thing take us down. COVID does not have to take the world down. COVID does not have to take our nation down. Your problems, whatever it is you're going through, there may not be anything related to COVID, but if you are struggling, if you are suffering, if there has been loss of job, loss of home, family trouble, turmoil, income, whatever it is that's going on, if you do what this person did here, cry unto the Lord and let the Lord hear you, I believe the Lord will honor this passage and will make sure that the time of your night becomes shorter and shorter and shorter. And then the Lord will bring about the morning when this thing will pass and be over. And when morning comes, you will have joy. Weeping endured for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm going to be a morning person from now on. I'm going to get myself up, brush my teeth, brew my coffee, go out and eat eggs and sausage and all that cholesterol stuff that we ain't supposed to eat. And I'm going to rejoice in the Lord all morning long. I'm going to sing to the Lord. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to glorify him and magnify him because the night is over and morning has come. Weeping is over and joy has come. Night is gone. Day has come. The moon has finished. The sun has now risen. Joy is coming in the morning. So onward, Christian soldier, keep getting up. During this time of COVID, during this time of hard time, don't be discouraged. Don't drop your head. Don't give up. Hang in there. Hold on. Pray your way through. Study your way through. Walk your way through. Run your way through. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't let it stop you. Don't give up on your faith. Help each other. Support each other. Love one another. Walk with each other. Take somebody to the doctor. Take somebody to go pick up their prescription. Help each other through this time of crisis. And then one day, we're going to look up and morning will be here. And we will walk in the fullness of joy. Woo! Weeping, endure it for the night. But joy, I said joy. Yes, joy comes in the morning. I don't like waking up early, but I think I'm going to get up early tomorrow morning and see what the day's going to bring. I'm going to run in joy. I'm going to run in peace. I'm going to run in love. I'm going to run in healing. I'm going to run in the goodness of the Lord and give him praise all of my days. Thank God that morning is on the way. Don't you see it? Look over your mind. Night is starting to give way. There's a little bit of daybreak starting to filter through. It's starting to slowly come in. It's starting, oh, I thank God. I see it on the horizon right now. But day is starting to come. Morning is starting to come. Dawn is starting to break in. Oh, Lord, I see healing. I 
I see life. I see deliverance. I see God doing what he did for the writer of this passage. I see God lifting you up, raising you up, and giving you strength. And I see in your face the restoration and reclamation of your joy. Don't give up. Morning is on the way. Don't give up. Joy is on the way. Make yourself a morning person. Become a morning person and walk always in the joy of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for choosing to worship with Mount Carmel today. For information on all of the ministry programs going on right now in Mount Carmel, from small groups to youth activities, or if you are in need of pastoral care, please visit our website at hopemountcarmel.org or at 301-662-1303. For information on happenings at our sister church, New Market United Methodist, please visit their website at newmarketumc.com or at 301-865-3530. And we wish to also recognize and give thanks for all the generous giving that the church has done through the pandemic. Your giving has allowed this ministry to continue. So thank you again. And may God keep you and bless you. Amen. So for our benediction today, thank you, first of all, for tuning in. We will see you again next week. And I want to say to all the veterans, to the men and women who have served, thank you for your service. If nobody else is grateful, your country is, and I am. I enjoyed my eight years in the Navy. And if I were young enough, healthy enough, and handsome enough, I would literally do eight years more. So God bless you and thank you. All right, the sermon was about weeping and door for the night. And joy comes in the morning. So I got to share for the benediction. I got to share with you all something that brings me joy. As I grew through my life physically, I never made it up to six feet. I stopped at 5'10", and now I'm shrinking. I'm literally down to 5'9 and 3 quarters. Kind of hate it. But one thing I was never able to do is I was never able to dunk a basketball. Never. I tried, I tried, I tried so many times. I could never dunk a basketball. So check this out. We have basketballs over here, but the kids in our preschool use those and they're all sanitized, so I can't touch them. So I had to borrow an apple or a pear, whatever the heck this thing is, okay? I borrowed it and I'm gonna have joy in the morning by dunking this thing. You ready? You got to count it down for me, okay? Five, four, 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 three, three, two, 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 one. No, 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 no,